pressure plates were 25 centimeters long and less than 10 centimeters wide. A matchbox without the sides, so thin that the wood on the top and bottom would flex when weight, a foot for example, was placed on it. They were wrapped in sellotape to keep them waterproof and stripped wire coiled over the plates. So when the sides touched, a circuit was created. This would send an electrical impulse supplied by two D-sized batteries to the detonator. The detonator was inserted into a large plastic oil drum filled with homemade explosive made from nitrogen fertilizer. Nitrogen fertilizer, which was sent to local farms through international aid. That was the beauty of IEDs. They were so easy to make. Sometimes local children would turn up to the gates of our camp requiring medical attention. They would have blast injuries to the face and hands. The Taliban would pay anyone to lay an ID. My grandma had all had ten children on the cold panel floor of their barn. It was a fight for survival. It was all anxious, dirty faces with tartan blankets and flannels, rather than blood pressure and the bracelets of hospital numbers. She would deliver the baby and crawl back into her rocking chair and sit and sway for days on end, fixated on the growling sea, falling further and further into her own isolation. It's not that she didn't love her children. There's a different kind of love when life grows amongst thistles and wilderness. Later in life, she wore nikes with flashing soles that she got from the charity shop and wore her hair in a tight bun at the top of her head, cold curls falling loose around a face wrapped up in a silk scarf. 